Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the migration update for April 4th, 2025 from the Derby Hill Hawk Watch. Today there were moderate northwesterly winds, so the count was conducted from the south lookout. The morning started off with some clouds, but became mostly sunny for the rest of the day. And overall, it was pretty chilly in the morning, but by the afternoon, the winds had died down a little bit and it became more comfortable. Here we have a male red-winged blackbird claiming his stake to the territory around the number three sign. This large swan tried to sneak by, but my photos were good enough to confirm that it was a mute swan. Here we have a water bird with a black head with long pointed bill, very thin pointy wings and trailing feet. This is a common loon. Here we have a sparrow that has some streaking to the upper breast and a white eye ring. This is a Vesper Sparrow. Here we have a large swallow that was completely bluish purple to both the top side and the underside because this was the first purple martin of the season, an adult male. Here we have another stripy sparrow and on this one we see yellow in front of the eye. This is a Savannah Sparrow. As expected today, after yesterday's massive flight of turkey vultures, we got a bit of a cleanup flight today, and the northwest winds affect the vultures a little less than some other species, so it was a pretty consistent and steady flight of vultures throughout the day, with a total of more than 1,000 turkey vultures. Here we have a raptor with a long tail and long thin wings. We see a brown head and more of a pale underside. This is a northern harrier. Here we have a raptor with a belly band and dark patagial bars. This is a red-tailed hawk, and we see that dark trailing edge to the wings and red tail that indicate that it's an adult. And this bird has a pretty dark throat, and a lot of the red tails we saw today were more heavily marked. Here's another adult red-tailed hawk. This is a more standard eastern or borealis subspecies red tail. We see the pale throat and just moderately heavily marked. Here's another one that's a little bit more heavily marked. We see kind of a big belly band and larger patagial bars, but this one does have a pale throat, so maybe just a heavily marked eastern. And one more adult red-tailed hawk. This one has a pretty large dark belly band and a completely dark throat, so this is likely from the northern subspecies. Here we have an ASIP, and it's hard to judge the head on this bird from this single photo, but if we look at the tail, it's a pretty rounded tail tip with a nice white tip to the tail. This is a Cooper's hawk, and the tail bands on this bird are a little irregular. Look how wide this gray tail band is. Normally they would be a little bit thinner and more consistent between the dark and the lighter colored ones, so just a neat tail variation. Here we have a large dark raptor with a large head. This is an eagle. And we see a lot of splotchy white throughout the underside, especially here in the wing pit areas and some to the underside of the body, making this an immature bald eagle. And this is a bird that's coming up on two years old. You can see two different ages of feathers in the wings. The ones that stick out a bit more that are more faded and also more pointed are the retained juvenile feathers that it would have grown while it was still in the nest. And then the darker, more rounded feathers are the ones that have already been replaced one time last year. Here we have another young bald eagle. This is a juvenile that's coming up on one year old. If we look at the wings of this bird, we see that all of the feathers are the same length because they're all the same age. And we can see the pale inner primary feathers that the light will shine through on a sunny day. And this is a pretty typical looking juvenile, a lot of white in the wing pit areas and into the wing coverts, but mostly dark to the underside of the body and the head. Compare that to this bird, where again we see that even trailing edge to the wing. And again, this bird is a juvenile, but look how white the belly of this bird has become. So this bird has already molted those feathers and is going into more of the white-bellied appearance that's typical of second-year birds. So this time of year, we're seeing some juveniles that are very dark underneath, like the previous bird, and some that are very light underneath, like this bird. Here we have a Budio soaring overhead, and this bird just looks really pale overall, and that's usually a sign that it's a juvenile. Uh, remember, the adult Budios have a dark trailing edge to the wings that give them a bit of a outline, but on the juveniles, a lot of times the feathers are all lighter, and it just seems like more light shines through them. Now, for determining which species this is, probably the most useful field mark are the pale crescents near the wingtips. You can see the light shining through before the dark part of the wingtips here. That's a good field mark for red-shouldered hawk. Here we have a hawk shaped like a flying cross. We see a long tail, a large head, and wings held out very straight. 
and we see a teardrop streaking more concentrated on the upper breast not reaching the undertail coverts and speaking of undertail coverts look how much they're fluffed out on this bird which is probably a sign that it was agitated possibly from seeing another from the same species this is a juvenile cooper's hawk Here's a gull that flew over towards the end of the day that caught my eye because of the two-toned appearance to the underside of the wings. And on this photo here, we can see a bit of the upper side of the wing, which shows it's kind of a medium dark gray color, darker than we would expect to see on a ring-billed gull or a herring gull, but not quite as dark as we would expect to see on something like a great black-backed gull, because this is a lesser black-backed gull. And we'll end with this small raptor with pointed wings. This is a small falcon, and it's overall light underneath. So a small, light-colored falcon is an American kestrel. And looking at the streaking on the breast, as well as the completely banded tail, those indicate that this is a female. Today, we had a total of 47 species from the South Lookout. Purple Martin was the only new species for the season, which brings us to a total of 106 species. Taking a look at the hawk count report for our migrating raptor totals, today we had 1,021 turkey vultures, 2 ospreys, 7 bald eagles, 4 northern harriers, 12 sharp-shinned hawks, 3 cooper's hawks. For beautios, we had 9 red-shouldered hawks and 59 red-tailed hawks, and we had 3 American kestrels for a total of 1,120 migrating raptors. That brings the April total to 5,657 and the season total to 23,960. Taking a look at the forecast for tomorrow, it's looking windy with rain, a high around 50 and winds southeast at 20 to 30 miles per hour. So it's a good wind direction, perhaps a bit stronger than we would prefer. But in any case, it looks like it's going to be very rainy for most of the day. Perhaps there will be a bit of a break in the afternoon. So it's hard to predict. I would say it's probably unlikely there will be much of a raptor flight. Maybe in those periods where the rain is light or there's no rain at all, we'll get some movement. But I wouldn't expect much of a raptor flight for tomorrow, though the conditions are favorable overnight tonight for a decent songbird migration. And with those favorable winds, non-raptors could be moving throughout the day. So might be an interesting day to be out birding, but I wouldn't expect much of a raptor flight. For Sunday, it's looking cloudy with a high only of around 40 and westerly winds at 10 to 20 miles per hour. So probably a day at the south lookout and light, maybe moderate migration, but not looking like a great day. And for Monday, it's looking partly cloudy with the high in the upper 40s, winds northwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. So we'll be at the south lookout again, and those are okay conditions. We expect light to moderate migration. All right, well, today felt kind of slow but steady, and hey, any day that you get over a 1,000 birds migrating at the Hawkwatch is a good day, and we really did end up with some nice looks at many different species, especially red-tailed hawks. It was a good day for taking photos of the raptors that were coming overhead, and the big turkey vulture flight is just an added bonus that gives you something to look at in between. Not sure what the weather will hold the next few days with this rain coming up and then some unfavorable winds. It looks like maybe towards the end of next week we'll have a switch back to southerly winds, so keep an eye out for that. Hope to see you soon out at Derby Hill. From Lyco Birds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.